Good morning, YouTube friends. Thanks so much for coming by. Today, I'm going to share with you the most simple and delicious pudding recipe you've ever had, and it's vegan. Keep on watching to see how. Okay guys, first things first, the base of this pudding recipe is any kind of non-dairy milk of your choice. I prefer to use soy. I feel like soy really blends with flavors a little bit more easily than almond or coconut. So I just have this organic unsweetened silk soy milk here. And we've got three cups going in a saucepan and medium heat. And we're gonna let this just simmer for a second while we get the rest of our ingredients ready. So now we're just going to add the sweetener of our choice. You can use whatever you've got on hand in your pantry. I happen to have some more of this swerve here. It's a granulated sugar-free sweetener and it's all natural and I really, really like it for baking. I also like it to add to my coffee or tea. So we're just adding a half a cup here and we're going to whisk it in. You can, of course, use sugar. I'd use a half cup if you're using regula regulated, <laughs> regular granulated sugar. Or if you're going to use stevia, I recommend starting small and then just giving a bit of a taste because it tends to be a lot more sweet than these two options that we're using here. So after whisking our milk until our sweetener is dissolved, we're just gonna let it heat on up a little bit for probably about three or four more minutes and then we're going to add our thickener. And our thickener is cornstarch. So super simple ingredient, probably something you hopefully already have in your pantry. And what we're gonna do to make sure we don't have any lumps, this is just the measuring cup I used for the sweetener and the soy milk, so it looks a little weird. <laughs> but I'm just taking out about a half of a cup here and the ratio that I think works just about right is about a tablespoon of cornstarch per cup of non-dairy milk. So I'm gonna add three tablespoons to our little measuring cup here. This footage is looking uber professional. <laughs> there we go, third tablespoon right at you. And then I'm just gonna take a fork and stir this up until it's nice and dissolved and get out as many clumps as I possibly can. And then before we dump it all back into our mixture, I'm just going to pour this through a little sieve to get out all those clumps. This step, I, it's not necessary. I actually didn't do it in the first couple of recipes that I experimented with and the pudding still tastes amazing. It's just kind of nice to get a really velvety smooth texture. So that's why we're gonna strain it. So once our cornstarch mixture is added, wow, that was hard to say, <laughs> to our pot here, I'm just going to whisk it continuously while it thickens up and wipe all the mess that I've made simultaneously, <laughs> don't mind that. And it happens in about two to three minutes. As you can see, it's starting to thicken up here. Once it coats the back of a spoon, like so, you know you're just about there. So at this point, I am going to turn off the heat and let it continue to thicken while I get my vanilla ready, because this is going to be a vanilla batch. And keep in mind, if you stop right here, this is the basic base recipe. So you can go anywhere from here. You can do chocolate, keep it simple and vanilla. You can add fresh fruit, any sort of extract you like. The sky's really the limit, and this base will take on any flavor you add to it. It's super versatile. Like I said, we're just gonna stick with basic vanilla, which may be my favorite. I'm also gonna show you a little bit of a banana variation with this vanilla pudding. So I am just adding three tablespoons of vanilla extract. I happen to just have the cheapy stuff in my cupboard and it worked perfectly fine. I imagine the higher quality of vanilla you use, the more decadent your pudding's gonna be, but this worked just fine. As we are all kind of cooking from our pantries at this point, I imagine. So I'm just adding that in here. You do want to make sure that your stovetop is off before you add your flavorings because if you let it boil with that flavoring, it may cook out some of it. So I just waited until 
my stove top was off and I'm whisking it in here and then we're going to add it to some glass jars. You can use whatever you'd like. You just need to get it in the fridge to cool down. So I've got these awesome little six ounce glasses. They actually came with my yogurt maker. They're super handy and it makes it nice because it's like a single portion. I'll link below my yogurt recipe as well. It's really yummy, it's super simple. So if you're cool with adding real fruit and the sugar of that, and you don't mind your pudding being unsugar free at this point, I highly, highly, highly recommend adding some banana to the bottom of whatever container you're gonna pour these into and pouring the hot vanilla pudding over it. The bananas will absorb the flavor of the vanilla pudding and the vanilla pudding is going to get infused with banana flavor and it is the most perfect way to use up overripe bananas that I have found to date. It's so good. Steve totally agrees with me. We may or may not have eaten all four of these in one sitting. <laughs> but even if you eat all four of these, it's really not terrible. Here's the calorie breakdown if you're interested. This recipe makes four six ounce portions and in each six ounce portion, there's 60 calories, three grams of fat, 5.25 grams of protein, 2.25 carbs, and zero sugar unless you add a little bit of fruit. So not bad, folks. This is our vanilla pudding, nice and creamy and delicious. This is our chocolate version. Like I said, it's a little bit more lumpy because I didn't strain that cornstarch out. It still tasted amazing. This is our banana version. So I'm just making us a little dessert here, topping it off with the rest of our banana. And I'm going to add a little bit of vegan whipped cream because we fancy and this is going to be the perfect little dessert during our quarantine pantry cooking. <laughs> there you have it. Three ingredients, super simple, hopefully stuff you have in your pantry already. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.